So, we're going to be doing some titration examples. I'm going to be doing them on here. Every titration is an acid-base neutralization. It's really just this. Hydronium, which is generated by the acid, when it donates a proton, that generates hydronium, gives a proton, generates hydronium, and hydroxide, which is generated by a base. Sometimes it's formed when the base takes the proton, but in any event, you wind up with hydronium and hydroxide. And then the very simplest change in the world neutralizes both of these dangerous chemicals, whoosh, turning them back into two water molecules. Boom, like so. Okay, two water molecules, just like this. So notice that's a very, very tiny change, but that makes a big difference in the world of chemistry. That's what's really going on. But a lot of times we leave these out. A lot of times we leave out the hydronium and the hydroxide, and we talk about the acid in the base. Like, for example, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. This is the very epitome of an acid. If you had to pick an acid to know, it would be this one. If you had to pick a base, it would be this one. These are the two epitomes of acids and bases. Now, really, they get a lot of credit for things they don't even do. All they really do is dissociate, they dissociate, fall apart, and then that generates, of course, hydronium and hydroxide, which do all the real work. These are the guys, the agents. This is the agent of an acid. This is the agent of a base. So there are many, many acids and bases that do this. So here's some typical acids. Okay, hydrochloric, of course, the epitome. And we'll, we also sometimes talk about nitric, bad one, bad, bad, bad. And uh, sulfuric, that's pretty nasty too. Um, acetic, well, that's the one that's in distilled vinegar, vinegar. And oxalic, we will see that a little bit later in actually one of these titration labs, okay? So those are your acids. Notice that all of them have at least one hydrogen that can dissociate. And then what about bases? Well, a lot of bases, like these two, have hydroxide in them. Sodium hydroxide, well, it's inside the chemical. Potassium hydroxide, well, it's inside the chemical. Ammonia is a little trickier to understand. We talked about that already. Bronsted-Lowry base, the way that it generates hydroxide is different. But for these examples, we're going to be using this kind. It's basically a alkali metal connected to a hydroxide. Okay, so those are the bases that we're going to be dealing with. And just FYI, notice on the solubility table that hydroxides are actually insoluble. Oh, wait, except group one. So that includes group one. Well, of course, because group one is always soluble, except for lithium fluoride. So alkali metals and even hydrogen, well, hydrogen hydroxide is water itself. So of course that's soluble. And then um, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, those are both in group one. Okay, so if you're wondering why those are soluble, okay. And here we go. So our first titration example is this one. What volume of 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide solution is required to neutralize 25.00 milliliters of a 0 0.15 molar HCl. So what I like to do when I have a titration problem, how do I know this is titration? Because of this word, neutralize. If it neutralizes it, then it takes it down. That means that when we neutralize it, we will have the same concentration in our final solution as we uh, of the acid and the base. Now, which one is which? Well, I hope you realize that if it has a hydroxide and an alkali metal, that's your base. Okay, hopefully you realize that. 
Bases often have hydroxides and alkali metals. That's a very typical base. So then this must be the acid. Or you might have noticed, oh, that's HCl. That's hydrochloric acid. That's the epitome of an acid right there, the epitome of an acid. And so really what we have here is the epitome of a base and the epitome of an acid fighting it out and neutralizing each other. So the question is what volume of that base is required to neutralize this volume and this concentration of acid. So what I usually look at first is which chemical do I have more information about? Because molarity requires one, two, three numbers. Three numbers. You can only solve for one. That means you need the other two. So whichever chemical I have two numbers for is the one I have to start with. So which chemical do I have two numbers for? Is it the base or the acid? I have two numbers for the acid. So the one we're going to start with is the acid. So the acid has two of the three numbers that we need. Oh, you know, I should write that in red. Okay. Now, there's a few things we're going to assume here. We're going to assume that hydrochloric acid is a really good acid and fully dissociates. We're going to assume the sodium hydroxide is a really good base and it fully dissociates. So really what that would mean is that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, if every single one of those dissociates, would be the same number of moles of hydronium. And the number of moles of hydroxide, if every one of these dissociates, well, they would match up as well. So we're going to make those assumptions. There is a way to deal with it when they don't fully dissociate, but we're probably not going to have time to get to that. So we're going to mostly be dealing with what we call strong acids and strong bases that pretty much fully dissociate. So I'm going to be using this equation right here. And notice that it doesn't matter which one is which. Which one is in the flask and which one is in the burette? It doesn't even tell me that. It just says what volume of a 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide solution is required to neutralize 25.00 milliliters of a 0.15 molar HCl. So it doesn't really say which one is which, so it doesn't really matter there. So let's do the first one. Let's do the MA. Does it give me the molarity? Does it give me the molarity? Oh yeah, there it is. It gives me the molarity. That M is that M. Remember the variable and the unit are the same. So I'm going to write 0 0.15 one five M, I'm going to put HCl, um, equals, and then we're going to have the moles on top and the liters of solution on the bottom. Well, it doesn't give me anything about the moles here. Oh, so that's probably what I'm going to solve for, X. A lot of times what we're solving for is the moles, right? But it does give me the volume, not in liters, it gives it to me in milliliters. Well, as you should know by now, Converting from milliliters to liters, I'll do this with a black pen, is very simple. You just divide it by a thousand, which is whoosh, 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 moves the decimal three times. Well, there's a letter there, but I put a zero here. So look, 25 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.025. Don't forget to put it into liters. So it has to be zero. 0.025 liters, not 25 milliliters. That would give me a big, big wrong answer here. And then when I solve for this, what am I going to get? Am I going to get moles of hydronium? Well, actually, what I'm going to solve for here, I will get moles of HCl. But since we're assuming full dissociation, we're going to assume that they're the same. So let's solve for x. What's the best way to solve for x? Remember? cross multiply. So we multiply the two that are diagonal, these two get multiplied. Oh, I've still got this on my calculator. This one is right there. Times 0.15. Boom. And so what I get here is that x equals x equals 0 0.00375. Now I'm going to keep all those digits for now. And what was the unit of x? Dang. Oh, yeah, look. I'm solving for that. So it's going to be moles. And then which chemical is it going to be? 
Well, actually it's HCl, but if we assume full dissociation, then if we have that many moles of this, well, every one of these, every single one of these would dissociate. So that would produce the, the same number of moles of this. What's this called again? Hydronium. So I could say that many moles of HCl, or I could say 0 0.00375 moles of H3O positive. So here's the important step. Don't forget to do this. This is a neutralization. Two monsters fighting it out and whoosh, knocking each other down like this, I guess. I don't know. My metaphor is uh, reaching its limits here. And so if you have that many moles of hydronium in your final flask, in your final solution, well, guess how many moles of hydroxide you would need? How many moles of hydroxide would it take to neutralize that many moles of hydronium? The answer is the exact same number. So you would need the exact same number of moles of hydroxide. So now what I'm going to do, now I've got that number. Oh, that's a new number for the hydroxide. And I've got this number. Well, that says sodium hydroxide, but remember, I'm assuming full dissociation. So I'm assuming that for every sodium hydroxide, for every, let's here's a two piece one, every sodium hydroxide, I will have a hydroxide. So I can use that for the concentration of my hydroxide as well. So I'm going to use that. There's my MB, my molarity of the base, 0 0.100. Those zeros only matter because it tells you how accurate your measurement is. So it's a good idea to put them. Oh yeah, and what is that? That is, I'm going to put um, OH negative of hydroxide. Okay. And then over here, well, we actually know the moles now. We've got the key. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, of course, moles is almost always the key to everything in chemistry. And once we have that X, we have the moles of hydronium. Well, again, that's the same as the moles of hydroxide. So in this case, in titrations, it's the same key. The moles of hydronium is the moles of hydroxide in the neutralized solution. Okay, so that's where we got that one. And I'm going to put that on top, 0 0.00375 moles of OH negative. Okay, and what am I solving for here then? Oh, I'm solving for the bottom here. I could put an X there, but since it's a volume, I think I'm going to put a V down there. I'm solving for V, which is going to be the VB, the vo volume of my base. So what's the best way to solve this? Oh, just like that one, we're going to cross multiply. But this one's going to be set up a little different because if I put this fraction here, well, what are my diagonals now? These are my diagonals. These two get multiplied. Okay. And then before I forgot to mention that step of divide, we had to divide by this one. We multiply these together and then we divide by that, but that was one. So that's why we skipped that step. But this time we're multiplying these and then dividing by that. That's not one. Okay, so we're going to divide by the odd number out. So, well, zero point, oh look, this is still on my calculator. 0 0.00375, that's the same number that I got up here. It's still on my calculator. Same, same, same. And times one, same. Now all I have to do is divide it by this. So when you divide by one tenth, it's like multiplying it by 10. So let me divide it by 0.1. And I know I'm going to lose one of those zeros. So when I solve for V, V comes out to be, what is it? 0 0.0375. Now notice I've lost one of the zeros. Oh, and what units um, would this be? Well, I'm solving for this, right? I'm solving for this. Oh, liters. So that would be liters of solution. I'm not going to put a chemical here because that's liters of solution of the total solution. And isn't that what I'm looking for? What volume? So that's the volume of my base. I could write VB here. I'll just write V for now. Um, but actually, that's the volume we're talking about for hydroxide. But it's got to be the same for sodium hydroxide if there's full dissociation. So that would almost be my answer. I would sort of say that's my answer. I'll put a B. I'll put a B. Okay. It's the volume of my base.
Okay, sometimes we say V sub A for volume of acid, V sub B volume of base, but probably better to put this in something that we usually measure with. On our instruments, usually we measure in milliliters, so I'm just going to convert that to milliliters. Technically, this would be the right answer, but let's put it into milliliters. And so if we had to divide by a thousand to go from milliliters to liters, what do we have to do to get back to milliliters? We have to multiply by a thousand. So if I take this, and if I multiply it by a thousand, the decimal is going to wind up between the seven and the five. Look, if I put in 0 0.0375 like this, times one zero 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 equals 37.5. So what I would get here, a better answer would be VB equals 37.5 and then ML. Now, I like to write the lowercase l, but technically that l could be capital or lowercase here, but the m has to be lowercase. So I would say, guess what? Um, that's my volume of base right there, boom. Now, there is a much quicker way to get to this answer. I'm gonna show you this, but I'm gonna warn you, I would only use this as a way of double checking. Because if you don't understand about the moles, like how many moles were there, why they had to cancel out, then using this shortcut method doesn't make sense. It just doesn't really make sense. So here's the little shortcut method. I'm gonna use this to double check if my answer is correct. So if I take the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid, and in this case, it doesn't really matter if they're in liters or not, if they're in liters or milliliters, so I'm going to take the molarity of my acid in milliliters, they're right there. So I'm just going to write those in the same exact form they're in there. This is my molarity of acid, 0.15 M. And then here's my volume of acid, I'm going to multiply it. I'm just going to keep it as 25.00 ML, I'm going to keep it in milliliters. That's one advantage to using this little shortcut equation. And then I'm going to use the molarity of my base, well there it is right there. 0.100 m and I'm going to multiply that times the volume I got 37.5 milliliters so these two shot these two sides are supposed to be equal they're supposed to come out equal if this is an equation so let's do let's do oh I got the, still got the 37.5 on this side so I'm going to multiply that times 0.1 I'll do this side first and what I get is 3.75, okay, and then, well, the units will be all messed up here, but this is just a way of double checking, so the units would be all messed up because this one is moles per liter and this is in milliliters, so I'm just using this as a double check, and then I have 25 on this side times 0.15, and that would give me, guess what, 3.75. Now, if I had put them both into, if I can converted these volumes into liters, well then the units would have made more sense, right? But this is just a double check that I'm using. I don't recommend you use this method, the shortcut method, to solve the problem because it really causes a big issue if it's a diprotic acid, very confusing. And we're gonna deal with a lot of diprotic acids very shortly. I'm gonna show you an example of one of those in a little bit. So I don't recommend using this to solve the problem, but it's a good way to make sure that your answer was right. I like to use it as a little double check at the end. I'll do that on the other ones as well, okay? So that is the right answer, now I know for sure. So that is the volume of base that I need. It takes more volume of the base because it's at a lower concentration. It takes less volume of the acid because it's at a higher concentration. The concentration of the acid, notice, is 50% more than the concentration of the base. So then the volume of the base has to be 50% more than the volume of the acid. Okay, that's the first example. That is our first example. For our second example, this is the example number two. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a different, we're gonna be using a different, oh, KOH. Is that the acid or the base? Well, you might be able to tell by the fact that they're color-coded. 
but that you should know that's a base not just because I wrote it blue but because it's a hydroxide of an alkali metal KOH it's another very common base and you might not recognize this formula HNO3 that's this one HNO3 nitric acid so this is um, a titration that we may or may not want to perform inside because of the fumes nitric acid is a bit of an issue to use indoors we can use very small amounts but it's tricky the pollutants that it causes that it forms okay so here we go the reason i'm doing this one now is because our first example notice was solving for volume but this one is solving for concentration in fact i'm going to underline that in blue concentration of the base so that's going to be the what we're going to wind up with getting where am i going to put it i'll just put it over here what we want is the molarity of the base what we want is that concentration is molarity that's what we're solving for so the one we have to start with again is the one that has more information we have more information about the acid so again we're going to start with the acid again we're going to assume that it fully dissociates we're going to assume that it's a really good acid that fully dissociates makes plenty of hydronium all of every single one of those will make a hydronium that's going to be our assumption and because we have two pieces of information for the acid once again we're starting with the acid let's do this one a little bit faster though because now we know the drill okay do we have the ma yes we have the molarity 0 0.56 molar equals and then do we have the moles oh once again we're solving for we're solving for moles which is usually the key to everything we're solving for that x right and do we have liters no but again what do you do i'm not even going to put it on the calculator just do one two and then three well that'll put a zero right there so 0.048 and i could put those zeros but i'm just going to put one of them zero and then liters okay now notice that um it's easy to move the decimal three times just be very careful and i always put the zero before the decimal some students are not in the habit of showing decimals clearly some students just do something like that and like is that a decimal can you even see this um, but also it's a good habit of putting something in the ones place and if that's a zero put the zero just get in that habit it's good mathematics don't leave that don't start don't lead off with a decimal bad habit okay so how do we solve it cross multiply what do we multiply we multiply these guys now i'm going to use a calculator i'm not going to do that one in my head point zero four eight i don't have to put in that zero in the end it won't affect the calculation times 0.56 equals now by the way i'm going to point out this time that yes technically i have to divide by the number that's left out but that's a one so whenever it's a one i usually skip that i should have pointed that out last time so don't forget cross multiplication you multiply the two that are diagonal the numerator on one side the denominator on the other okay then you divide by the only other number and it gives you the unknown variable so once again we've got x we know that we're solving for that which is right there that's going to be moles and the number that i get is 0 0.02688 and that's going to be moles well there's my unit right there okay moles and yes again that's the moles of the nitric acid but then of course that's also i'll put that good decimal two six eight eight moles of the h3o positive hydronium and what else is it the same as because we've neutralized if you neutralize something again then the hydronium and the hydroxide have to be equal the hydronium and the hydroxide have to be equal so I'm going to write that same exact number again, and that's of the OH. And then again, we're going to assume that it's also the moles. This time I'm going to jump straight to the moles of the KOH. It's also going to be the same number. I'm writing it, yes, I'm writing it four times. I really am. Moles of the KOH. Now you might wonder, why isn't he rounding this off to the hundredths place? Well, if I rounded it to the hundredths place, it would be over rounding here. It would round that up to 0 0.03. So I might want to keep a few more digits. I actually would probably want to round it here. 
But just so you can see where this all goes, I'm not going to round it till my final answer. If you're ever in doubt about rounding, you can just go through and just round off your final answer. But if I did round right now, what I would do is I would get rid of that 8 and turn that one to a 9. That's what I would do right here normally. But as this example, I don't want to make that the issue. So now we know the moles of the hydroxide and the potassium hydroxide. So we're going to put that right, right there. 0 0.02688 moles. And I'm going to put, because we're actually looking for the concentration of KOH, I'm just going to write KOH. It would have been the same calculation if I was doing it for the hydroxide, by the way. And we want to know the MB. We don't know the MB this time. So that is what we're looking for. So that means I must know this, right? Because I have to know two of the three. Let me make this darker. I have to know two of the three numbers in this. You can only solve for one of these at a time. So I either have to know these two, or these two, or these two. I have to know two of the three. So if I know, if I know I'm looking for that one, I better know this one. Oh yeah, there it is. 24 milliliters. So 24, this time I will do it on the calculator, divided by 1,0,0,0,1,000 equals 0 0.024 liters. So I just turn the milliliters into liters. Always do that because the definition of molarity involves liters. So in either case, it's got to be liters in the denominator. And once again, look at this. Now we're going faster. Cross multiply. Okay, well... The ones that I'm multiplying now are these two numbers, the 1 and this. So it's just this. And look, these two numbers are very similar. So my answer here is going to be pretty close to a 1, isn't it? Whenever your numerator and denominator are that similar, you know your answer is going to be close to a 1, not that far from 1. So I'm going to multiply these. So 0.02688 and then I'm going to divide by the number that's left out. So I'm multiplying these two and then dividing by, where can I write that? Dividing by 0 0.02688 and then, well, times 1 to cross multiply and then same number and then divided by 0 0.024 equals, so I wind up with 1.12. So MB, which I was solving for, this, the concentration of the base, is equal to 1.12. What would the units of that be? What are the units over here? Oh, molarity, capital M. So my answer, capital M, very clearly capital. Not a little like round M, that's molality. Don't write those, no, no. Okay, so that is what I was solving for. And usually we indicate the chemical. When we're writing molarity, usually we indicate the chemical. So I'm going to say, KOH. It's a potassium hydroxide solution. And then, well, I probably want to circle that answer. So notice I can double check it with my little handy dandy little equation here. And let me do it the same way I did it last time. I'll be, again, a little sloppy with the units because we just want to make sure that it all works out that we did it correctly. Okay. And again, I don't recommend you using this to solve it initially. But then my molarity of my acid, that's this. So 0 0.56 M, and then the volume of my acid, this time I will turn it into liters. Okay, so we already did that anyway. I'll use this one, 4, 8, uh, I'll just put 4, 8, 0 liters, just like I wrote there. And then that should equal the molarity of the base right here, the MB, 1.12 M, uh, multiplied times the volume of the base, which we already turned into liters right there, 0 0.024 liters. So these two shots, this is an equation. These two sides should be the same. Um, so notice that um, molarity is moles per liter, and we're multiplying it by liters, so then we should get the same number of moles on both sides. That's, that's, so that's the unit we will have in our answers. This time, because we've used the correct unit, we will get a unit in our final number. So let's see, 0 0.56 times 0 0.048 equals, on the red side, I get 0 0.02688 moles. Isn't that funny, right? 
And then on the other side, what do you think I'm going to get? If I multiply the bases, what do you think I'm going to If I get the molarity times the volume, this one, if I do this, I expect to get that exact same number. Of course I will. 1.12 times 0 0.024 equals, yep, 0 0.02688 moles. And this would be the moles of my hydroxide. This would be the moles of hydronium. So, of course, that's what we're saying, that they're equal. Now, um, this is kind of like when you've done an algebraic equation and then you go and plug the numbers back in to double check. You plug in what you saw for X and what you saw for Y just to make sure that it really works. That's how I recommend using this. Some people like to use this to solve the whole problem, but then they don't really understand what is going on and it can lead to lots of problems as you're going to see on our final example. This was the second example. We're going to do another one and then on the final example you're going to see where this can lead you into problems. So that was example number two. So for example number three, it's similar because we've got chemicals we've already seen in the other examples. Oh, we just saw that one in the last example, HNO3. Okay, what is that called again, HNO3? That is, of course, nitric acid, nitric acid. And then NaOH, that is sodium hydroxide, your classic epitome of a base. So these are kind of like monster chemicals. What I mean by that is nitric acid is kind of like Godzilla, and sodium hydroxide is kind of like a sentinel, and both of them could do a lot of damage to you, especially if you're a mutant, I guess. And you don't want to have either one of them around, but what you do in a neutralization is you have them fight it out, you know? They, they blast each other, breathe fire on each other, irradiate each other, until both of them are goners. And you have a neutralized solution. So acid-based neutralization is like taking out two monsters. By the way, uh, we got these at, for Christmas at a Toys R Us going at a business sale, so they weren't, they weren't too bad, actually. Um, both of these monsters take each other down and then every, that's why we live in kind of a safe world because acids and bases take each other out. Okay, so we've seen these two before, but not in the same problem before. By the way, I want to point out that acids lead off with an H. Almost always, if you're trying to identify an acid, it leads off with an H, like HNO3, HCl. So look for that leading H, and that's usually the one that dissociates. That's the one that dissociates. And a lot of bases have hydroxide in them, not all of them. But if it has hydroxide, that's a good indication that it's a base. Also, of course, because I've color-coded them. Okay, so the one on here that's red is an acid, and the one on here that's blue is the base. But if it isn't color-coded, well, you can always tell. So, and one thing I want to state here a little more explicitly, I want to show it exactly, is that we are assuming that the concentration of HNO3 is equal to the concentration of H3O positive. That's an assumption we're making. We're also assuming that the concentration of NaOH, remember that's how you write concentration, you put them in those brackets, those square brackets, not parentheses, um, is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. We are assuming those things. That means it would be a very strong acid and a very strong base. Now, if it's not, if that's not true, then you have to use Ka. That's in section four, but we're not going to probably get to that this time around. Um, we're probably not going to get to the Ka calculations if it's not a perfectly strong acid. So we're just going to make that assumption throughout, that these are strong acids, strong bases. Okay, so what is the concentration of HNO3 if 35.00 milliliters is required to neutralize, it's a titration problem, neutralize 87.00 milliliters of a 1.50 molar NaOH, sodium hydroxide. Now, one thing I don't want you to get confused about is the, this is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide 
before they were combined. Whether the sodium hydroxide is up here, let's just say it's up there, or it could have been down there, before they're combined. After they're combined, the concentrations of these two will have to be the same in there, but that's after. We're talking about the concentrations coming in of the acid and the base, or vice versa, the acid and the base, before they get combined. Okay, so which chemical do I have more information about? Which one do I have more information about this time? What do you think? I've only got one quantity for my acid, but I have two quantities for my base. So this one, I just wanted to show you, the reason we're doing this example is to show you sometimes you start with this one. You don't always start with that one. Sometimes you start if you have more information about the base. So we do know the molarity of the base. It's 1.50 molarity equals, let's see, what else do we have? Well, we don't have the moles. We don't have the moles. And again, moles is the key, okay? But what we do have is milliliters. Oh wait, what do I have to turn that into? Liters, how do I turn it into liters? Divide by a thousand. How do you divide by a thousand? Really easy. Move the decimal once, twice, thrice. So there would be a zero like where that E in neutralize is, and there would be a decimal before that. So always lead up with a zero, and then that's that zero from there. Eight, seven, and if I wanted to keep those two zeros, um, to show, I'll just keep them this time to show you where those went. Those are the same zeros, okay? And that's liters. Now a lot of times we round these away, because they're not very significant here. Um, anyway, we, usually we'd round those off. I just wanted to show you that that's where that number went. Get it? But it's in liters now, which we need. So what do I do? Cross multiply. How do I cross multiply? Throw that over one. Very neat trick to do. Then I multiply the diagonals, multiply those. And if I do, uh, let's clear the memory, memory minus, okay. If I do 0 0.087, that's all I have to really type in of that, times 1.5 equals, and then I could divide by the remaining number, which is a 1. I could divide by the 1, but it doesn't change it. So what I'm going to get here is my x, I'm solving for x, equals 0 0.1305. What's the unit of x? Again, it's from up here. The unit is moles. And which chemical are we talking about? Oh yeah, we're talking about the base. We're talking about NaOH. So now we have moles of base. Now this time, I'm going to round to this position. Generally, we only keep um, three digits after the zeros. Generally, for the most part, I could keep that five like I did in the last one, but I just want to talk about rounding. Does the five round this number up? Does it round it up? Yes, it does. So I'm going to round it now to 0 0.131 moles. That's a little bit more reasonably rounded. Okay. And that's what I'm going to use to figure out the concentration. Sorry, not the concentration, the moles of hydroxide. Because remember, we assume their concentration is the same. Well, they're in the same container. They would be in the same volume. So, they're con uh, so the moles would be the same too. So I'm going to, again, use that number. I'm just rewriting it. Notice it's the same thing. Moles of hydroxide, OH. Okay, so we got the moles of hydroxide. And remember, this is a neutralization. It's a titration, which is a neutralization. In order to neutralize, you need the same number of hydronium and hydroxide to neutralize it. So whatever the moles are, that's how we count the chemical. Well, it's going to be the same exact number, that's a zero, moles of H3O positive, okay? And then, if I'm assuming that it's a perfectly strong acid, it's also going to be the same 131 moles of HNO3, nitric acid. So we want to know the concentration of nitric acid. We already started off with the volume. And now we've got the moles. So remember, all you really need to get the concentration of an acid is the moles and the volume. You just have to make sure the volume is in liters. So now I'm solving for um, 
A, the molarity of my acid, right? Okay, and remember, the moles of the, the, moles of the base and, and the moles of the acid, if it's a perfectly strong base and a perfectly strong acid, then they're the same, but it's always for the hydroxide and hydronium, they've got to be the same to neutralize. Otherwise, they wouldn't neutralize. And that equals, and this number, where does this go? If this is my fraction bar, where does this number go? Well, look, moles of hydronium, uh, well, that goes right here. So again, these are the same number. So because I'm solving for the final one here, I'm going to just put in, uh, I'm going to put in nitric acid, 0 0.131 moles of HNO3. Now, if you had done this with hydronium here, it would be the same answer. And then you could make the leap later that, oh yeah, that would be the same but I'm making the leap a little bit earlier. So you may notice, I might be making that leap at slightly different positions here. I might be making it right now, um, before I do this calculation, or I might do this calculation and then make the connection that because those are the same. Okay, and then what is my volume of acid? 35.00 milliliters, but you can't put milliliters down here. So I'm just gonna do it by hand, once, twice, thrice, I'm trying to bring back the word thrice for three times. That's gone out of a practice for the most part. And you've got 0 0.035. I'll keep those zeros again, just like I did there, just to show you where they went. And now it's liters. It has to be liters. So how do I solve for MA? Guess what? Cross multiply. Which ones do I multiply? Well, these two are the diagonals. So I multiply those. Well, that's the same number right here. Now, I've rounded it there, but it's, I'm, I'm going to just leave this on my calculator just to save because I'm lazy. <clears throat> and then I divide by the remaining number, okay? Divide by the remaining number. Now, you might say, why cross multiply when you've got a numerator and denominator? I don't know. I just like to cross multiply. Sorry. You can even cross multiply in this situation. Or you could have said, well, that's the same thing as dividing this by that. Okay, whatever. Okay, divided by. 0.035. I'm just showing you cross multiplication works a lot of the time, a lot of the time. So what I get for my MA, my MA equals uh, three point, and I'm just going to round it to the hundredths place, seven, three. Now, uh, seven, two, eight, five, but I'm going to round that to, I'm going to round the two to a three. And then what would the units of this be? Oh yeah, molarity. And what chemical, what's the, uh, what is my acid? Oh yeah, HNO3, identify the chemical. Another way to write this, this is the way we often write it in chemistry, is notice how this shows concentration, right? I could do this, HNO3, concentration of a nitric acid equals 3.73M. And then by writing it like this, it tells me which chemical we're talking about. Okay, so should we do the uh, little double check? The little double check? Let's just do this really quickly and see, make sure they work out. So that means if I multiply the concentration of my acid, this, by the volume of my acid, this, I'm just going to multiply those and get the number and put it here, just to do this double check. Oh, it's right on my calculator, this. So I'm going to multiply by times 0 0.035 equals, that gives me 0 0.13, and I'm just going to round off the rest. And of course, remember that would come out in moles, moles. Okay, so yeah, it's the same. I'm just rounding it off even further here. And then of course, on the other side, what do I expect? I expect to get the same number. Now, because we rounded, there's always a chance they could come out slightly, slightly uh, different from each other. They can always become slightly different uh, within the within reason of rounding. And so really, I'm going to multiply these two together. And again, we need this in liters. I'll just do it in liters again. 0 0.087, that's the volume of my base, times, remember, it doesn't matter the order of operations, 1.5 molar, 1.5 equals 0 0.13 moles. And again, if I rounded it, I would get these numbers. So this is another way of double checking. This is a double check, ching, that just proves that we did it right. But I would always do it this way so you can keep track of what's going on here. 
And so this would be my final answer, by the way. I would circle my final answer. It's good to keep track of what you're doing, wh what's going on with the moles. Okay? So that's why I like to do it this way. Solve for moles. Moles is the key. Use that to understand what's happening, and then solve for your final answer. If you use this one, it will run into problems, as you're going to see in my next example, the last example. Okay, so for my last example, I want to show you what happens when you've got a different kind of an acid. So, we've already seen this base, we've seen this before, it's not sodium hydroxide, but it's potassium hydroxide, well, very similar hydroxide of an alkali metal, and that's how, and you know it's a base, because look, it's got hydroxide in it, come on, come on, okay, and then, well, that must mean this is the acid, so acids lead off with an H, right, but this is H2SO4, what is H2SO4? H2SO4 is for dehydrating carbohydrates, but um bump. Okay, H2SO4 is this one. H2SO4 sulfuric acid. There's something different about sulfuric acid when compared to hydrochloric or nitric, the ones we did in the previous examples. Notice how each of those has one hydrogen dissociation. One hydrogen dissociation, right? The hydrogen breaks off, dissociation, right? Oh, but wait a second. Sulfuric acid has two. It has two different um, hydrogen ions that can dissociate. So this is what we call, guess what? A diprotic acid. These ones, and this one too, are called monoprotic acids. Monoprotic acids can break off, only this one breaks off, by the way, not these, can break off one hydrogen, so that means if you have a mole of monoprotic acid, you can make a mole of hydronium. But these diprotic acids are different customers. They can doubly dissociate. They can make two hydronium ions. Now, sometimes one of them breaks off easily, the other one not as easily. We're not going to consider that. In this example, we'll just assume that they both fully dissociate. And again, if they don't, well, you can deal with the Ka of the acid, but we're not going to be having time for that. Okay, so monoprotic, diprotic, don't you think there could be more? Couldn't you have a triprotic or a polyprotic acid? Yes. You can have acids that actually dissociate lots of hydrogen ions, but it's typical to have mostly monoprotic and diprotic acids. But these happen a lot. So we're going to be seeing these in some of our labs, so we have to watch out for diprotic acids. Okay, sometimes you can tell something is a diprotic acid when you balance the equation, if it takes twice as many moles of the base to neutralize the acid, well then you know you must have a diprotic acid. You can also look at how many hydrogen have broken off when you look at the conjugate base or the final products. That's another way to tell. Okay, so with a diprotic acid, this is gonna be slightly different. Mostly the same, but there's gonna be an important step in between. So sulfuric acid, H2SO4, H2SO4. Okay, so what is the concentration of potassium hydroxide if 22 milliliters, 22.00 milliliters is required to neutralize, so it's a titration, of course, it's a titration that we're doing here, 50.00 milliliters of 0 0.63 molar H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Okay. So which one do I have more information about? I have more information about the, which species, which one? The acid. So again, we're starting with this one. Okay, the last example was the only one where we started with using the base one, okay? So do we have the MA? Yep, 0 0.63 molarity equals, do we have the moles? Guess what? Nope. X. Do we have the liters? You know what to do, right? How many liters would that be? One, two, three. Oh, that's the third one there. So it'd be 0 0.050. And I'm not going to keep those zeros this time. Liters. Okay. So how do we solve this? 
cross multiply, multiply these, multiply those, and then you divide by this. So let's do that much faster now. And then we're gonna wind up with x equals over here. Okay, so I'm gonna do 0 0.63, 0 0.63, 0 0.63 times 0 0.05 equals, so now I've got this number, 0 0.0315, and I'm going to keep all those numbers this time. And what's the unit of x? Moles. And what's the chemical we're talking about here? H2SO4, sulfuric acid. So why am I keeping three now when we're way off in the tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths place? The reason is because that's three digits of information, and I've got three here, four there, four there, so keeping three is perfectly reasonable. These zeros actually are just placeholders. So if that were in scientific notation, that would actually be only to the hundredths place. So I am gonna keep all three of those in this case. And now normally we would assume that the concentration, normally we would assume that the concentration of sulfuric acid is, um, is equal to the concentration of the hydronium, like H2SO4, we would assume that it was equal to the concentration of H3O positive, but actually it's not, because this is a diprotic acid. So remember that whatever the number of hydronium is, okay, whatever the number, excuse me, whatever the number of sulfuric acid is, you'll get twice as much hydronium. So what we have to do here is we have to put a two here. Now you don't actually have to write this out, but you have to keep this in mind. If it's a diprotic acid, whatever the moles of of you get of your acid, you have to multiply it times two because it is diprotic. Probably write that down. So we're, I'll just put this, I'll put the times two because it's diprotic. Okay, so I take this number, the number of moles, times two, boom. Now, that gives me zero point 0 0.063 moles of H3O positive. And that is the number that I need to neutralize. Remember, we're not really neutralizing the acid directly, we're neutralizing the hydronium, the hydronium that it makes. So that's the important number. That's the one I need to know the moles of, the hydronium, right? And then we need the same amount of hydroxide as we have hydronium. Whatever number of moles of this we have, we need the same number of moles of that. So then I will use that number to get to my 0 0.063 moles of OH negative. And of course, this, is a, this, this base only has one hydroxide, so there's no confusion there. These relate directly. You can say, you can actually state that the concentration of KOH is equal to the concentration of OH minus. You can state that, there's no two here. So then that's the same number that I can use again, 0 0.063 moles of KOH, my base. And so now we've got to solve for the concentration of KOH. So let me um, use this one now. And we've got the moles and we've got the milliliters. Okay, so we're solving for MB, and we've got the moles, well this goes on top, right? 0 0.063 moles of KOH, this pen is running out a little bit, and then I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my milliliters here, divide it by a thousand, there's a zero there before the uh, twos, so 0 0.022 liters. Oh look, 22 into like, if that were 66, it would go in three times. This is gonna be around three, isn't it? It's gonna be a number around three. You can sort of see that sometimes, okay? And I could just divide them this way. Actually, let's do it that way. We don't really have to cross multiply because if we have a numerator and denominator, remember if I did cross multiply, like I did in the last example, it still works. You can cross multiply under many circumstances. But this time we'll just do it the traditional numerator first. Some students sometimes mess that up, which is not good. Numerator first in the calculator divided by denominator, 0 0.022.
and I knew it was going to be around 3, and guess what? It is around 3. It's MB equals 2.8. I'm going to round it to there. 2.86, and what's the unit of this? Moles per liter, I could write moles per liter, I'm just going to write M. Remember, molarity M is the same as moles per liter. Some people prefer to write it that way. I definitely prefer the M's. And what chemical are we talking about? We're talking about KOH. So what's a better way to write that that I showed you last time? You can write concentration of KOH is equal to 2.86 molarity. My pen just made it there, just barely made it. So there's my answer. Oop, there's my final answer. Now, if I want to double check that using this, well, the problem is, guess what? This is harder to use now because you have to throw a two in here. Uh, and which side do I throw the two in? Well, let's see if we uh, multiply the concentration of the acid together and the concentration of the base together. Let's see what we get down here, okay? Let's see what we get. So. This is, I'm going to start because I have this on my calculator right now. I have this one. Let's do this side first. So this times the volume, this is my concentration times my volume, times 0 0.022. Oh, look what it's going to do. It's going to give me back that numerator. It's going to give me back 0 0.063 moles. Of course it will because we're looking at moles, right? But then what do I get if I do the same thing with my acid? Remember, this is my acid. Okay, so if I take that 0.63 times the volume, this is, that's my mol molarity is the point, 0 0.63 times my volume, which is the same as that. Uh, let me do 0 0.63 times 0 0.05 equals, I don't get the same thing. Look, I get 0 0.0315 moles. Well, that's actually half of that. They're not the same, notice. So what you need to do on this equation, I think I have one over here that I can do this on. Okay, um, here's another, this is the same thing, but you could put a, for a diprotic acid, if it's a, if it's a diprotic acid, you have to remember to put a two on this side. Now, multiply the whole thing by two. Now, it's, that's confusing because some people would put a two on the other side. And I, that, that's one situation, and you have to know it's diprotic. So you actually could get away with using this equation if you're very, very careful. But I really prefer, honestly, if you're going to understand what is even going on here, if you're going to understand the chemistry, you need to understand the moles. Moles is always the key. Moles is the key to chemistry. And it's the way we count our chemicals. It's the only fair way to count chemicals. So I would definitely recommend using my method, solving for moles, thinking about what, which ones match, and putting it back in using this equation twice, I would definitely recommend that over using the shortcuts, the shortcuts, which can be confusing. And they don't really, they might give you a reasonable answer, sometimes you might nail it exactly, but you probably won't understand why and what is even going on. So those are my titration examples. And the only thing that can complicate it more than that is if you have a weak acid and you have to use a Ka or something like that. But pretty much, you're always neutralizing the hydronium and hydroxide. That's the main thing I want you to think about. So you're going to need to use these examples. You're going to need to look back at this when we're doing the titration labs because it involves calculations like this. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.